welcome back. In this video, we're going to create W.E.B. Dubois angled bar, stacked bar chart. So it's on an angle. This is a stacked bar chart. How hard could it be? Well, uh, let's say I spent more time prepping for this one than I hoped I would, but I think I got this figured out and we're gonna hop right in. So here it is. I'm actually using Tableau Superstore 2020.4 and I'm visualizing the percent of sales by region. I know it's sort of a basic way to break it down, but that's exactly what I'm doing here. And we're gonna recreate this visualization, but before we do, let's take a look at how I have it set up. So I'm just gonna go to our stacked angled bar chart. Hopefully I've selected the right sheet here. We have two LR, which is just left and right, is what I'm calling it. My left and right points and our top bottom points on rows here. So we have two. And you'll notice the big thing to call out here is that on columns, I have value tracing a path. And on this other marks card, I don't have value. So value is a calculation that you'll find out how we're using it in a minute, but it all relies on whether value is on our view or not. If it isn't, then we're gonna show labels. If it is, we're gonna do the polygons. And that's a big thing to call out because it's gonna control how our calculations are created in a very significant way. And if you've watched the um, previous video, which was on the pyramid area chart, we're following the exact same design for this visual. So I'm gonna start by creating a new sheet and I'm going to connect to my data source and show you what I've done. So sort of pre-prepared it, just like in all the other videos. Same process applies right click editing my data source and you'll take a look here's my superstore data set orders and it has a join to it to this data source called placeholder sheet 3csv sheet 3 is just a single column that counts from 0 to 200 where the column name is value so this is a critical value for our analysis i've done a number of videos discussing how to do this but we're just going to do a calculated join on orders and placeholder. And that calculated join, you'll see is just the number one on both data sources. So you will just edit your data source connection here and you'll see I have a calculated join, edit calculation, it's one and it's equal to one. This is going to do a many to many join, combine all of our data together. Once you've connected your data, you don't have to use Superstore. I'm just using it because it comes with Tableau and you've created the CSV and you've created this join, you can come into your view. We don't need all of our data. We actually only need five points. One point controlling every corner and then another point to connect it back to the beginning. And even then it's a little bit of overkill, but I like to do it because it's knocked out perfectly when we do it that way. We're gonna just go find value. And we don't need all 200 points, so click and drag it onto filters, then select all values. And from there, we're just gonna filter this down from zero to four. So zero, one, two, three, four, or five values. I'm gonna hit okay. That's a big first step, believe it or not. Let's go find region and we'll place region out on color. And we'll go find value and we'll do the polygon first. Place value out on our view. Let's change that to dimension. And then we'll change our mark type to circle so that we can just see the points on the corners first before we do anything else. Now let's create our two calculations. We only need two. We need our left, right, and we need our top, bottom. So first up, left, right. Let's just call it left dash right. Those are going to give our left points and our right points. The first part of this calculation is going to be when value isn't on our view. So when value is not on our view, we're going to have essentially five different marks to aggregate up from. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if count distinct value is greater than one, then let's say in parentheses zn lookup running sum and, he, oh, you know what? We forgot to do our calculation that we're gonna aggregate up on. So let's do that first. Um, I'm just gonna create a new calculator field and, uh, you know, pause. Think about what we just did. We'll go rewrite it in a second. But our, the total we're just gonna do of sum of sales. And we'll use the LOD this time. So we're just gonna say fixed. And then we're gonna do fixed on value, comma, region. And we will sum sales. And then we're gonna divide this by a fixed calculation on value of sum of sales. This is a uh, overkill, but this is how I wanna write this. And this is just gonna be our target value. And again, this is a percentage, right? If you think about it, I have four regions, they're gonna roll up. It's gonna be a percentage of 100. So it's gonna go zero to one. So it's a, you know, zero to 100%. So 
That's what target value is. Back to building node left to right calculation. Let's just see if it saved any of what I did. Um, it did, believe it or not. So I'm just gonna right click, edit. If you missed out on anything, again, we're gonna start by saying, if count distinct value is greater than one, then we're gonna start with a parentheses, actually two parentheses, ZN parentheses, look up running sum. And this is where in here, we're gonna do our target value, that percentage. So running sum of our target value minus one. Oh, and by the way, target value is a row level calculation. So we're just gonna wrap this in min to make it an aggregation as well. Lots of steps here to sort of get this prepared. So min of the running sum, there's our lookup calculation minus one, ZN as well, uh, closing that out. Um, I think that's the first part here. Oh, we want to add to it the running sum of the min of your target value. And um, by the way, once we have all this in here, I'm just going to hit N to make sure I've got it all in there. I'm missing one more parentheses. I think I've got all of my parentheses inside this one, one from the end. Just do divided by two. That's a big call out. And then we're going to do one more thing. We're just going to add 0.125. We're going to come back to why we have 0.125 in here later on. But this value centers our labels. Just know that's what it does. So now we have to get to each of our individual points. So we can say else if our min of value is equal to zero or our min of value is equal to one or our min value is equal to four. So we've got a bunch of different values. This is going to calculate our leftmost point is the left side of our chart. And we're going to say for here, um, then let's do the ZN of the lookup running sum. I know there's lots of nested calculations on this one of the min of our target value. So lots of nesting. Again, not much we can do on this one. We need them to do this calculation. We're going to just say else uh, running sum min target value. And we're going to add another, another little section. We're going to have two if statements in here. And the second if statement is just going to be if min of value is less than or equal to 2, then 0.25, else 0. This is going to do an adjustment to our height to sort of shift it from being like a standard bar. And it's going to shift the value and build this angle for us. And then we're just going to say end here. By the way, this 0.25 and this 1.25 value that are hard coded in here, yeah, that's how they're related. This 1.25 is half of the 0.25. And that's a big call out. So I'm just going to hit apply here. Now let's go find our left right calculation and bring it out onto columns. And we'll start to see some of our points show up here. We can just right click, edit our table calculation, and we're just going to select region. And you'll see most of our values between 0 and 1.25. That's because some of these values shift over to the left and to the right. And this is great. If I click on west, by the way, you'll see here's our four points. These eventually will all connect and build our polygon. Our south, you can see our four points. Same thing east and central. All coming together. Actually, quite, you know, for as much work as that's in that calculation, that's almost all the work. The other one's a lot easier. I'm just going to create a second calculation called top bottom. It's going to give our top and bottom points to each of our uh, four pointed objects. And we will say if count distinct. So this is going to be for the label once again. If the count distinct of value is greater than one, then we're just going to say 0.25. That's it. That's the first part here. Else if min of value is less than or equal to two. So everything that's at the top, the top few values here, we're going to control. Then let's go ahead and say zero, else 0.5, and end. And then we're just going to add, by the way, our left-right calculation. I know that seems a little bit weird, but adding this value in here is going to actually do the adjustment perfectly for us. I know it's a little bit funky, but it, uh, we sort of uh, built the shift into the left-right, and all we had to do is add it in there, and it'll sort of do the, the shift. But trust me on that one. That's all we need. I'm just going to hit OK. And now we can go find top bottom. It will click and drag that value out. 
on two rows. Oh boy, I look at this, my points are all looking funky. Don't worry, just edit your table calculation. And let's choose region. And now we've got our aligned values. Check that out, you can almost see it showing up already. Now, what do we need to do? Just change from circle to polygon, and there we, oh, oh no, what just happened? That's a fun little shape, but uh, we just need to move value to path. And don't worry about the distortion that you see here. This distortion can be easily adjusted by just changing the size of your view. You just need to sort of adjust your axes and make them a little more proportional. That's it, uh, it's out of proportion. Finally, let's get the labels. Just click Control and then duplicate your left to right calculation. Now we've got two of them. Go to that second marks card, remove value off your view. Don't panic when it, your polygons disappear, that's fine. They're gone, oh no, just change your mark type to um, text here. Oh, look at that. And now we'll just take region, click and drag that from color to text, then right click on our axis, dual axis, right click, synchronize, synchronize your axes. Get them together. Oh no, what's going on here? I'm gonna have to take a look at that. That's not where they should be lining up. But anyway, let's go, before we change those labels, let's format. Let's go to our row dividers. Let's remove those column dividers. That's from dual axis, by the way. Our four step remove grid lines, zero lines, axis rulers, and axis ticks. Once those are gone, we're almost there. You're just gonna uncheck your headers. And finally, let's go fix this label. Not sure why it's doing that, but it's a left-right calculation. So I'm just gonna check this off and go left-right. I'm gonna edit this and maybe we'll just, instead of adding these values in, we'll just add zero uh, and see what happens. So that brings it over a little bit. Maybe we'll do minus 0.125, hit apply. Oops, what did I do? Oh, I forgot my plus. There we go. Now, not a plus, minus 125. Okay, that's what I did. I put the wrong sign in there. Should have been that obvious. I, even if I look at my notes here, it's minus 1.25. Yes, these are still related, this uh, 0.25 and this 1.25 on this view. I just did it wrong. Anyway, it's a good check for all of us. And once we have this on here, again, same thing as last time. I could use a percentage on there, but I can just go and click and drag sales onto my, my value here, onto text, and that's it. That is our angled bar, stacked bar chart created originally, at least from what we know, uh, this visualization that we're recognizing. WB Du Boy came up with it, and uh, we're just replicating it for this, uh, for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, if you learned anything, go ahead and like down below. Um, and um, anyway, we'll catch you in the next one. We got one more left to go.